Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. I'm Jeanette. And we're talking about The Golden Bachelor. We're talking about three episodes today. I don't even remember what numbers they are, but... I think they're six, seven, and eight. I trust you. Um, okay. I got really sick and basically lost my voice, and that's why we have not been... Uh, well, that's why you haven't heard my voice for a couple of weeks, because nobody heard it. Um, but... Now I could talk again, and so we're just going to talk about all three episodes um, together in this in this recap today. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting, you know, we can sort of look at maybe even knowing who who is a who made it to the fantasy suites. Can, can we figure out why that is by looking at their uh, their hometown visits? Um. So I guess Leo, <laughs> what are you looking at, Bob? I had a visitor unexpectedly. Is it your boyfriend? I said hi. Yes. Look, I, that was a very much I see my boyfriend facial expression you had there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It was genuine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, no, I'm excited to talk about these three episodes. And sorry that we didn't get to talk in between. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Uh, We can go back to the hometown visits. We only got to see visits with Teresa and then Leslie and then Faith, right? Didn't they go across the U.S.? Yeah. From east to west? Probably. And each time they met their kids, the women's kids, they met the women's grandkids. And each time I did feel like... Gary said, I'm in love with your mom, your grandma, and I think I'm going to marry her. And I did think, oh, man, that's really intense. He's going to eventually be lying to two of these families. And it was kind of rough to watch that. Yeah. Now that I know this format more thoroughly by watching this whole season, I can see it's pretty cruel in a lot of ways to really fall in love with families and women and, and men fall in love with each other. And then you have to break up again, another pitch for polyamory. But yeah. anyway, what I have t- heard too, that a lot of the time the bachelors are, they're more reserved in, you know, re- revealing who, their feelings and who they have feelings for and stuff um, to avoid this kind of situation. I just think, but also the bachelors that we have for it, they've, they've dated more, you know, they're, they're used to right. dating more than one person at a time. I don't think Gary is, you know, breaking people's hearts on purpose, but like he hasn't dated around ever, you know, like he was married to one person for 40 years, I think. Right. And he clearly, he, he leans into his feelings all the time. And so he, I don't think he knows how not to, you know, I don't think he knows how to be reserved in his feelings really. So each time he's in each location, I did feel he fully immersed himself in it and he let himself feel as much as he could, maybe a bit less with Teresa's family. And maybe it's because it was the first visit. He seemed to be a bit, a bit more reserved there, but still had a great time with the grandkids and was pretty open with the, um, her sisters. I, I, I really enjoyed watching all of those visits I did feel like when he got to Minneapolis and he was visiting Leslie's family, it did feel like he didn't fit as well with her family. I don't know if you felt that too or not. Yeah. Yeah. I thought her family was um, the probably the least like close knit, most loosely knit, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and a little weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little weird. <laughs> but aren't we all? Uh, Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, honestly, I think that's sort of what the, the hometown visits show me is just, yeah. Who can Gary fit with and and where I think, I I mean, I agree. He sort of fit, didn't seem to really fit with Leslie's family and in Leslie's life. Um, but I feel like that was also the issue of faith is, he fit with the people, but not in the place. And it was like, this is such a different yes. life for him. And yeah. in general, in general, people don't change their lives that much 
at all ever, but especially like at 72, you're going to move across the country to a small town and become a horse guy. Like it feels really, really unlikely. So we are talking about these episodes after now everyone has seen all yeah. of them. So he's at Faith's house. I loved her son so oh, much. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, man. And her life he needs seems great there. for sure. Her family seems great. Yeah. And you can see, like, she's a catch. But I I think she needs to date somebody who lives nearby because, like, she yep. just lives. It's a very specific American yes. lifestyle that doesn't fit it's everybody. It's a very specific kind of life. And she's clearly, yeah. and I, she's not going, she's not budging. She's not leaving. She, Cause she even, when she says my horse is buried here, it's like. <laughs> That's when you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, yeah. It's not going to be you her. Have to, her horse is buried there. You have there. to completely come in and live Faith's life or it's not going to work. And, um, and there are guys out there who would be down to do that. But Gary, he's not one of them. And so when she, when he was there visiting, I did think he had an incredible connection with her. And I loved how much he thought about it. You could see he really thought about what if my life were here or some of my life were here and what a beautiful place. So um, for each visit that he had, I think he did really try to imagine himself in each place. Yeah. And he gave it a full immersion Could experience. I be this person? But, Could I be a horse? But you said you... You already knew while you're watching it, you thought, oh, he's not going to connect with Faith. No, it's not. It's not going to be Faith. It's not that I. It's not connected with, but. It, it's that I, I was just like, even just seeing him on a horse, I'm just like, this isn't him. him. <laughs> he's not a horse guy. Like, this isn't his life. Yeah. And. He's a machines guy. He wants, he wants to be on a four wheel or a motorcycle or something like that. But he did like that she's a motorcycle rider too. Yeah. Um. But also, he's he's a social person. They're in the middle of nowhere. He would have nothing to do yeah. out there. You know, it would if he tried to come live face life, it would turn into like all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy probably pretty fast. Like he it turned shining right yeah, away. Is that what you're he saying? Just, he wouldn't have anything to yeah. do and any people to talk to <laughs> now. And so I I can see it just like it doesn't even matter how he feels about faith as a person really it's just their lives don't work like um yeah because her life is awesome you can see it. her life is awesome but that is a, it's a very specific so, life and i think he was trying to see like and i've done that too because i've fallen in love with people whose lives are completely incompatible with mine and you go like well could i be this person maybe i am maybe i maybe this is the life for me and then eventually you have to admit like fuck it's not i really want it to be because i want this to be the person yeah. for me and maybe in some different life this would be the person for me but this isn't my life it's their life and and you can see it's such an awesome life there's no way in hell you would think well faith should compromise faith should move no way this is her life she's built a great one and like and that's one thing that is unique about the golden bachelor too is that all four of these lives for the three women and this one man they all have really entrenched families, grandkids, adult children who rely on them. You know, we even saw uh, one of the women fly home because she had to yeah. go home and be mom. It would be challenging for anybody on The Golden Bachelor to up in their life and go live somewhere else. By the time you are in your 70s, you just don't really want to live somewhere else. You, all your friends and your family and everything you know it are would be around you. Up and it's not so that you're old much. and stodgy. <laughs> yeah. It's just that you really have built, uh, you've invested yeah. and you feel invested in that place. Especially, yeah. You're living to your kids and your grandkids. They're all doing that. Nobody wants to give that up. And pe people who are on the regular bachelor, they're usually in their twenties and thirties, right? Yeah. And that's they haven't a time in your life where you your family yet. I think it's still yeah. a flaw of reality dating show, you know, like, because it's still like, yeah, if people want to make this work, you're, they're going to have to change their life so much. But at, at least, yeah, for the regular bachelor, they're, they're younger. They maybe haven't picked where they want to live for the rest of their life most of the time, or maybe all the time. I don't know. They don't have kids yet, you know? Um, and also, a lot of them, I think, want to live in L.A., I mean, even for the younger ones, you know. And so this so, is – this. Uh, once it starts getting down to the, like, practical question of it, I think that 
it ends up making the, these decisions really, really difficult. And also like, I think it, for me in my mind, there's only one person who, ma- who makes any sense, but just from a practical standpoint, and that's not what people want these shows to be, you know, it's not supposed to be like who fits my life the best, but that's what it has to be at this point. And again, more lessons that people can get out of watching it is that you have to be more practical in your romantic choices. It is a business that you're also putting together as you're putting together a life with someone, you have to be attracted to them, but you've got to have a lot of overlap in your values and even down to what do you like to do and compatibility what vacations do you compatibility want? Is it makes a big difference at least as important as love if not more but erica i didn't get the feeling like you did that faith's life was the least compatible because when he was in new jersey i did think ah oh, i kind of can't see him in new jersey and Teresa's life does look nice but it didn't look exciting enough for him but I did think, well, Teresa will probably try to have a more exciting life with him. And a reason why she doesn't have this exciting a life is maybe because she doesn't have him in it. You know, I, I could see that, but it didn't seem I like a great fit. Teresa is the most likely to be willing to and be able to change her life to fit his. That's what I think. Um, yeah. I Obviously, she still, still wants to see her grandkids and, and stuff a lot. But no, I don't see him moving into her life either. But I don't see that as a requirement for faith. It yep. was you got to move here and live where her horse is buried, you know. Um, and I, I think even the fact that uh, Teresa's life was the most boring is sort of part of why um, it actually might work. Because like, I think she's willing to change her life. Um, she's even sort of mentioned like, I'm super down to change. Like, I just haven't had a reason to. Um, yeah. And, and I think probably his life is somewhat similar, but in Indiana, you know, it's just with his kids and his grandkids. Uh And, um, so then when he was with Leslie, did you have a feeling of the lives were incompatible or how did you feel about that? Or just the families were incompatible? Um, yeah, I just thought I was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm also a little biased because I don't think Leslie's a good fit at all. And I just don't really like her, but, um, I, it did just feel like, yeah, what, you don't belong here. I don't know. What are you doing here? Like, it just, um, I think you and I are both now rooting for Teresa and we kind of maybe have been for a while. Teresa is the only option that makes any sense and that could possibly actually work. That's what I think. But I think he is still thinking about Leslie. If he's know, a maybe fool. we'll jump ahead and dip it. <laughs> let's go to the, how do you feel about, let's go to the next episode with all of the women. So yes, uh, the next episode is the women tell all. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this one? I definitely like the regular episodes better than having them all sit around and talk about what it was like. I don't know. How did you, how did you like that episode? It was my first time experiencing one of those. I mean, I thought it was a little weird uh, just to have the reunion before you've had the finale, basically. Um, I guess that's, Oh, that's, uh I guess that's normal for the bachelor, but I also, I didn't realize that it was going to be the women's hell all. So I, I also, I mean, Okay, in my defense, yeah, I was sick and a little out of it, but I thought it was going to be the finale. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when it just ended. And then when it didn't end, I watched it first and I texted you, and you're like, So, did you find out? Don't tell me. And I said, Yeah, we didn't find out. And you're like, Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. So, it was going to be disappointing no matter what because I thought we were going to find out who won. <laughs> and then it was yep. like, Oh, it's just ladies chatting. What? Um, mm-hmm. But. And then it was some of the inside jokes and did they become friends? And, Most of all, I thought you could really see how much the women who went on it hoped most of all just to get a little famous. They didn't need that much to connect with a guy and they might marry this guy. I think you can see how for most of them, they're like, I hope I just enjoy being on TV. I mean, I think that's the main reason anyone goes on any reality show, you know? Okay. And it's clear it's a it is a normal human desire. It, just to 
be a little famous. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes okay. people end up finding out, Ooh, there's also a downside to being a little famous, you know, like, especially if you go viral because people don't like you or something, you know, people who end up being the, like Kathy, you could tell Kathy showed up wanting to rehabilitate her image because yes. she did not want to be the villain. She did not enjoy it. She didn't do that on purpose. Yeah, she is like, I'm nicer than this. And yeah, she didn't like that they took those clips out. Cause I'll bet there were a lot of clips where people were not at their best and they just decided we're going to just do the Kathy ones. Well, yeah. Cause also that's how reality TV works is they're going to make archetypes. Yeah. They're going to make storylines. And so it's not going to look the same as it felt to experience it. And, um, and Kathy might not have been the, the biggest bitch there, you know, but maybe she was just the one who had the best little zingers and clips that it was the easiest to cut together a little story. And so she might have easily felt like, hey, there's some huge assholes here. Why is this focusing on me? But it's, it's because reality TV is not interested in fairness at all. And most people don't really know that, you know, um, especially if they're older ladies. I could see anybody who didn't get a good edit might have been, you know, uh, upset about it and surprised. Um it's a big reason why I will never go on reality TV is I think I would get a bad edit. I think I'm just too, I'm a little too weird. <laughs> I would give them too many things. Yeah. There'd be just, I would give them too many options, you know? So they could turn me, they could there. I think there are too many potential narratives with me that I wouldn't like. <laughs> Even and though I'm not a villain in real life at all. I'm a nice, nice person. <laughs> And then, and then the women who were there at, uh, during this Women Tell All show, they did review some of the the moments that they had also just watched because, you know, they got to watch yeah. the show and see what they pulled out. And then it was things like, oh, man, we all had bad gas one night. And oh, my God. They're, this woman faked they, her ankle injury. And this woman, you know, all these different little snippets. Sandra's farts. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra's yeah. farts. It was so funny, but you could tell she was like, oh my gosh, she, she didn't think they were going to gonna put those in. Right. But then she did have some of the longest farts you've ever heard. And and she is like clearly <laughs> laughing at her, her, her own farts. So it's like, okay, she's not that embarrassed. You know, like, I, I think I would be a lot more embarrassed but to yeah, have my I, farts on TV. I think she was really surprised. That, that I mean, that, I think that kind of knocks her out of she's going to be the next bat, golden bachelorette. <laughs> That's terrible to say, but I think it does. If they showed that, they don't want her to be the Golden Bachelorette. That's a very interesting <laughs> and good point. Um, what I've heard uh, anyways is that Sandra, because a lot of people, yeah, they want it Sandra or um, Susan, but most people think it, it won't be them because they're just too quirky. They're usually the Bachelor and Bachelorette are people who are a little more normal you know and i think that's too bad like i don't know why like why can't the leads of shows be characters you know like why do we always have don't to you be think that the main yeah the main reason that you think it's because they can't see 25 men fitting with one quirky woman but you could see one bland woman and 25 men potentially could maybe that's it but i will say her. from experience you can find 25 men who want a quirky woman like <laughs> I quirky women have you can have, say from experience yeah we have just as, as easy of a time finding lots and lots of people who want to date us I like it <laughs> it's true um but so was there anything so a lot of, you liked from that episode that I liked um mm -hmm. the, I mean I will say that's probably the one I watched where I was the most like I think I had a fever so it was like my oh, memories okay. are the haziest of that episode, but the part that really stuck out to me that I thought was very interesting is when Faith came on, um, I, I had a couple of thoughts. One was, I wonder who he picked and how she's reacting to this, because if he picked Leslie, she's so pissed right now watching Mad. this. Like, yeah. She's dying watching this. Like, Teresa, I think it handle it. But that's exactly a big reason why I don't think you should pick Leslie, is I think Leslie yes. is too jealous and insecure. And, like, this would be making her miserable. And, but, like, 
you, you would have Leslie to- will try if if he if he partners with Leslie, Leslie will try to control him. She will need to to try to minimize the pain that's happening inside her own head. And it's just, yeah, if you're that insecure, you should not date a famous person and he's going to be famous now forever. Yeah. You know? And people won't run up and go, oh my gosh, Leslie. They're going to run up and go, Gary. Yeah. Women are going to flirt with him in front of her face forever. (laughs) And that's a big reason why I think like Leslie, Leslie shouldn't want to win, you know? Um, So I imagine they filmed all of this probably last May or something like that, maybe. I I don't know if it would be that long ago. I don't know either, but it would have been at least a couple of months ago, yeah, probably longer. And I was surprised that Faith was still so torn up over the breakup that she really cried hard and was, it's like it happened yesterday. I, I thought she might have gotten a bit over it more like Ellen had. Well, this, so I like Faith, but the reason I did, she was not my favorite is because I, she was too insecure. And so like, that's also why I couldn't tell the difference between her and Leslie for a long time. Cause they would say similar <laughs> things. Yeah. You know, like I've never been chosen. <laughs> Did you kind of look alike? Like, yes. uh-huh. Um, so I didn't, and they never seemed to be happy for the other women who had a date. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but the, but yeah, so this was actually the other thing that stood out to me. Cause I just thought if I was faith, I would, I would be the way I would make sense of this is, that I have a very specific life out in the middle of nowhere and the location of it. Our lives are just too different. And I just found it interesting that she didn't like look at it that way at all. And I reframe things like if it's possible to reframe something in a way so that it at least makes equal amount of sense, you know, it's at least as good of an explanation, if not more. Um, but it will hurt my feelings less. That's the explanation I'm going to go with. So if I was her, I would have been looking at it as like, you know what? We did love each other. We meant a lot to each other, but it makes sense. Our lives are just so different. And, um, I, I live, you know, far away from him in this small town. And it just like, it's, it like, it's just too big of a change for him. That's how I would have been processing it the whole time. (laughs) Um, whether that was true or not, like, um, and so I did find it interesting that she, like, she didn't choose to look at it in any way that would hurt less. She looked at it in the most hurtful way, like, you know, he didn't love me enough. He, she, and I, I don't understand that. I don't understand doing that. For, like, that makes no sense to me. I love the way that you think and that it is a more mature, um, I'd say, way to think, but it's also... <laughs> So much better for you. If you know you're going to create a story out of facts, Which why not you are, create a nicer done. story? Yeah. Absolutely. That's all we're doing all the time is creating our own life experience through our thoughts about what's happening around us, what's happening inside us. So she's choosing to create the story of here I am dumped again. And yeah. I think when Leslie gets dumped, <laughs> if I can say that, she's going to go through the same thing. Yeah. She's. It's going to be, oh, I knew it. I always knew it. Nothing yeah. good will ever happen for me. That, that's been my big problem with both Faith and Leslie the whole time is they brought these really negative narratives about themselves into the show where nobody knows those narratives. Those narratives don't exist. You did like, you didn't have to bring them. You brought those narratives yourself. Yeah. These narratives that hurt your feelings and, and like you are the one hurting your own feelings and I just, I don't think you should do that. I think that's a bad idea. Um, and and there's a little bit of me that wonders if Gary is going to pick Leslie because he knows how much she's going to freak out when he doesn't pick her. So he might pick her for that reason to not experience the freak out. And because he clearly does have a part of him that like he likes to be a savior. He like you know. Yeah. He likes we her noticed fragility. that in previous in previous episodes. Yeah. Yes. And just by yeah. choosing Faith and Leslie. Just the fact that they were in his final yep. three. They, like Because we thought, gosh, Ellen would be so much more fun for him to hang out with. She's really got her life together. She's got her brain together. And he didn't pick her in part because he does like being a rescuer. Yeah. So it's possible. He'll she still doesn't pick need Leslie. him. She can live without him. And he clearly he has something which I personally think is unhealthy, but who am I to lecture a 72 year old um, <laughs> that like it, it's not good if somebody can't live without you. Like, and it's not good to need that or want that in somebody else. Um, 
But and we don't know what his relationship was like with Tony, his wife. It is very possible that he had a beautiful long relationship where he was constantly saving her, and he feels very comfortable in that yeah, role. Yeah, it might be the it only way he knows purpose. how to be in a relationship. It might be the only kind of relationship right. he knows how to have. Which, in and that case, too, I get it. What um, you you should <laughs> be, learn how to become a completely different person now. In the you know. It's like it's you're the twilight in overtime. of your life. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm not gonna tell anybody. Yeah, go to therapy now, and you it'll take about four years to completely change. No, like he doesn't have time for that. Like, just go ahead and be the white knight and find your you know sad princess who locked in the tower or whatever. Um, so maybe he'll do that. So how do you feel about, we talk about episode eight where they go to Costa Rica. Yeah. 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 The, the fantasy suites. Fascinating episode. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, parts of this episode, I was like, I was physically painful. I was mad at him. I was yelling at the TV. Um, Cause like when he, I, when he's saying things and making decisions that I think are bad, I'm like, no, oh, like it hurt. I f- I <laughs> physically feel it. And that's when I'm like, I'm too invested in, in television. Um, so one thing I did like, I like that the that the um, producers decided s- s- that this time Leslie would be the first date, and then Teresa would be the second. Because I wouldn't have liked it if it was Teresa then Leslie and Teresa then Leslie. You know, mm. from the family visits to Costa Rica. So uh-huh. I did like that that switched up because I did feel like when I watched the family visits and he had his first one with Teresa, he got more open as he went along through those family visits. And so he didn't get a chance, I thought, to connect as much with Teresa's family as he did by the time he got to Faith's family. He was more open with those sons and, hmm. and the grandkids and, and just more natural with them. than he was, And he was a bit stiffer with Teresa's family. You know, and it could be because it was Teresa's family. I don't know. But it felt like it just felt too new. So I liked that this flipped up and he had the Leslie visit first and then he had the Teresa visit. Although when it started, the Teresa visit started, I thought, oh, no, this is not going to go well. Oh, no. And I can't even really blame him. It's like he has – yeah, he was married to one person for 40 years and then he hasn't, you know – he hasn't been like banging a bunch of chicks in the last six years or anything. So like any intimacy they had, whether they slept together or not, like, um, which that's their business, but anything that is going to be a big deal, it's going to be on his mind. And so, yes. And, and like, he's going to, f- obviously he f- falls in love a little bit with everyone. He's even having a, a, any connection with. So like, it makes yeah. sense that like, his mind would be so much on, on Leslie, but it, it was really painful to watch and it felt so unfair to Teresa. But then – the, To have it be the next day. Yeah. I really thought they should have given him a day to recover yeah. before he's thrown immediately into, yeah. hey, here's this other woman. See if you can connect with yeah. her the same way. Whew. Yeah. Can you tell me what made you yell at the TV? Oh, I mean just when he was saying like, you know, I know it's not really fair to Teresa, but like I keep wondering what's Leslie doing right now. I was just like – Oh, it's just like, I I just, and I feel like, you know what? I know this is difficult, but you're the fucking bachelor. Get your shit together. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to treat Teresa this way. Grow up, man. Yeah. You're the bachelor. Yeah. Get invested. <laughs> I know, like, you know. Your your <laughs> mind is is stuck on, on Leslie right now, but you're you're not allowed to do that because right now you're on a date with Teresa. So like, pull your head he out of Leslie's ass it. and get going. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was mad. <laughs> he did say it was getting harder and harder to compartmentalize. Yeah, and he so had like, at least I get it, but he had the family visit start now. Start compartmentalizing. They, they were across the U.S. and he got to be on a plane in between. Mm-hmm. I just thought I don't know if that's something they always do to the bachelors, but they make somebody always go back to back. But I really think they need to give them a day, I agree. sometime on their own, sometime to call a friend. Yeah, uh, just something that to break things up a bit. Um, go get ice cream. Yeah. Even like before you have to go. Yeah. Get a good night of sleep. Absolutely. He hadn't even had a good night of sleep. He's old. He needs that. And it it was the first time he said he had 
intimate relations with someone in a very long time. And it just seemed emotionally unfair to do that to him. So let's talk about the, um, the date with Leslie. Can we talk about that? Sure. Yeah. The repelling date, which I did think sounded fun. Didn't you think it was unfair that she's on the waterfall side? She's the one who's terrified. They put her straight into the pouring water. He's on the dry side. He's like, you're doing great over there in the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? I I felt like that- I felt a little bad that I didn't feel more bad for her because I'm just like extremely not <laughs> rooting for her. But I'm like, they have not put her in a good position here. Yeah, it'd be difficult. No, it was really unfair. And she was such a trooper about it but she is a real athlete and i didn't doubt that she was going to be fine i could see why she wondered if she'd be fine especially when the waterfall's pouring on her head from 100 feet above i did think gosh she is actually sliding around on rocks with a waterfall pouring on her in another country this is a bit much to ask and a camera on her yeah and he's in the dry side it would be a bit much to ask it wasn't his almost fault. anyone yeah but- yeah and keep smiling and looking flirty. Yeah. You can do it, Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, I would say, you know, she put in the best effort anybody could, could ask for, I think, you know, but like, I also thought, I think, I th- that was fun to me, but. But I, the other thing I liked is it did give them some real togetherness in a way that he didn't get with her on the ATVs. And so then when they had, him and Teresa on horses. It was just like the ATVs. Why are they coming up with these strategies of let's put people in a single file at a distance from each other where they can only down the, you know, this far away, you can kind of see. I I, I really hated the contrast. Yeah. If you're going to have them repel together, then the other two should share a, like a wave runner or something, (laughs) you know, something that's close to each each other. I will, I will say though, I think even though the repelling thing was a difficult situation for Leslie, I still think that was the easier situation for her than if they had switched their dates. Because if she had been second and she had been with Gary while his mind is somewhere else, she would have taken that so personally and it would have gone so bad. There's like, and I'm actually not can even you, talking. Can you imagine her face? Well, well, that's why I also, when, so when he said, I wonder what Leslie's doing right now. And they cut to Leslie and she just has her shitty face on, which she always has whenever anyone else is out on a date with Gary. And I was just like, <laughs> of course, that's what she's doing right now is just stewing and be unhappy. And he doesn't know this side of her, but I do. And I don't like this side of her at all. Can't you just see Leslie and Gary playing doubles and pickleball? And she's just like, I hate that other couple. I hate the woman in that couple. <laughs> also, I don't know. It just Leslie. I've never seen Leslie do anything nice for another person. Like think about another person. Like say something nice to any of the other women. Like Leslie is just, she's a self-centered person who's not nice. She's not nice to herself, but she's not nice to other people either. And so um, I don't like that. Um, I do think, though, I'm not even criticizing her by saying that she wouldn't have done well by going second because I think most people wouldn't have, which is actually why I went from, like, I th- I'm i supporting Teresa by default to I'm supporting Teresa because, damn, she actually is really emotionally mature because the way – Yes. The way she handled that, she did not take it personally. And said so she completely was like – how are you feeling? That must be really difficult for you. And and that wasn't an act either. You could see she's not hurt by the fact that his mind is still on Leslie right now and he is thinking about a lot because she really does understand that. And I was like, hot damn, Teresa. Like that. She's a catch. Yeah. I was really yeah. impressed by the way Teresa handled it. And so I do hope that women watch this, men and women watch these episodes and see how mature she is and how she responds to things. I think a lot like of people when it did. all went down with Kathy. I, I went on the mm-hmm. subreddit because Teresa has been pretty hated on the internet. People just in general don't like her. I think because she's a little too neurodivergent for most people, you know, so like she just reads as weird. Um and yeah. Um, and I also I haven't also gotten a great read on her. I've also thought, you know, like what's going on up there? Um, 
but getting to really, yeah, getting to see her, her personality more and the way she thinks and the way she treats people. I was really impressed. And I went on the subreddit and I saw a lot of people were, where a lot of people were like, wow, I didn't like Teresa until today. I think a lot of people were impressed by that. Cause I think also most of us would look at that and go, yeah, I wouldn't handle that situation that well. You know, like that was a genuinely difficult situation. And even if, because I don't tend to take things personally. Even if something is meant to be personal, I'm supposed to get my feelings hurt by it. I probably won't because I won't even, I will have been like, oh, they must be going through something, you know? Um, and they're actually like hoping that I'll pick up on the fact that they're mad at me. I won't. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but even I, I think in that situation, like whether, I, like it would have probably hurt my feelings, you know, or like I, like, I would have a hard time coming back from it. I don't know that I would be able to come from like the mood that they were in at the beginning of that date to where they got to by the end. That's completely co- Teresa made that happen. I don't know that I could yes. turn the mood around like that. You know, I think so. I think most people watching it were like, wow, I, I wouldn't handle it that well as, as Teresa. And, and, and I saw some people be like, I feel inspired now. I want to be more like her. Like I want to, I want to be mature like that. And so and I, I get she did keep a positive outlook. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of women throughout this, the episodes cried at certain moments where they felt like something bad was happening to them. And this was something that was yeah. bad that was happening to her. And instead, she really kept she's positive very unselfish, on, you know? Yes. Yes. And I, I get the feeling that not only was she married for a long time, but I think she had a good marriage for a long time. Yeah. And I think that makes it. And difference. I loved it when she described, you know, this is kind of mixing up the two dates a bit, but when she described her job and how much she lit up when she talked yeah. about how she got started in and the kind of competition she was up against and how she felt about herself from it. And just that she'd built such a successful life from her mind and skills, yeah. tenacity. It, and then when was, he got uh, to see that really side fun. of her, he was like, oh, he loved watching her. Uh, yeah. Be proud of herself. And she said, and, you know, but I would stop doing it. If I were married to you, I would marry you in a yeah, moment yeah. and I would just stop working. <laughs> but right now there's no reason for me to stop working, yeah. but you'd be a reason. Which is also why I think mm-hmm. she would probably move to Indiana, but you know, or if they, you know, if they want to do, maybe they should just go Someplace ahead and be else. like old people and go to Florida, you know, but. Um, right. And they might. Yeah. So I think she's the most willing to change her life. And not even necessarily in a in a bad way. Like, I think I maybe was actually a little more judgmental of her before where I thought she was willing to change herself for her partner. But now I can see, like, I think she really just, she is an easygoing person. She yeah. is a, a naturally very empathetic and caring person. And so, like, it's not... It's not like she's trying to grab him. Like, yeah. I need to grab him. And she's not, yeah. like, hurting herself by being accommodating of other people. She just – she is. And I get that because I frequently, like, I really I, – I will be accommodating because I really, really don't care which thing it is. You know, like, I'll, um, yeah. a lot of times, like, sometimes I'm not easygoing at all. But a lot of times I am easygoing. But I'm never making myself be easygoing. You know, like, if I am, it's just because <laughs> I actually am. Like – um, including on sometimes big things. I'm like, I could date this person or I could be friends and I mean it either way. Um, and that's like, yeah. so I bet, I think Teresa is like that where it's just like, even sometimes on big things, she could be happy either direction. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I, I felt like, yeah, I mean, we are skipping around, but the way that, um, Gary was looking at Teresa by the next morning I was like, oh, wow. Like, because, yeah, but at the beginning of their day, I thought, oh, shit, he's choosing Leslie. Like, it's over. But I thought the way he was looking at her and talking to her and stuff, yes, he's looked at Leslie with, like, infatuation, but I felt like he was looking at Teresa like he's in love. I was like, yes. Oh, I saw his face change also. Where he was looking, like, he's enthralled, impressed, like, proud. Like, he's amazed by this woman. That and that's when I was like, oh shit. Well, I think he probably is going to choose Teresa because, like, this is different than how he has felt for Leslie and Faith and everything. Like, he looks and and now we could see 
yeah, okay, he falls in love with everybody a little bit, but this is different. It looked like a different level to me. Where I was like, and and I think I'm glad you saw that too. Yeah, and, yeah, and Frida and Frida did it too, and and it just mm-hmm. so that yeah, at that point I felt like oh he and it is probably something that. After the last episode, I'd love to go back and look at this episode again and look at him emerging from the fantasy suite with Leslie and then again with Risa. When he comes out of that that night with Leslie, he did have such an amazing experience. And I think it was incredible for both of them. And I'm so glad for them that they had such a great experience. But it did seem like when he emerged from the, the experience with Teresa, he said he saw a side of her that he had never been able to see before. I remember the thing that he hadn't been able to do yet was fully commit to, I'm in love with you. Yeah. But by the time he, he emerges from the night with Teresa, he's like, I am in love with you. I it think was too- interesting, right? As they say goodbye at a distance, though, she yells, I love you. And he's it's like, ah. <laughs> and it was, but I wondered if the producers did that just to try to hook us. He might have said, I loved you. And they muted it out. Or yeah, he I mean, said it a that. second later. Yeah, right. Also, I didn't think that it really point, meant anything. He said he loved. They her. really want us. To, they they want to keep us guessing, so they don't want it to be obvious yes. either way. Um, yeah, but I did also find it interesting. When he says like, "And you know how I feel about you," and he, he was like, "And I I I love it. You you really know how I feel," and that made me think, "Oh, maybe now he's also he has seen the difference between um, what it's like to be with somebody who." is insecure and needs constant validation versus somebody who, who doesn't someone who, who is yeah. secure and who, if you tell her you, you love her, she believes you, you don't have to constantly be reassuring her. And you could see the value of that. And that may definitely be me reading too much into it, but I also felt like, I felt like, Oh, he, he can see how nice it is to have somebody like, when somebody doesn't need constant reassurance, it was like, you know how I feel about you. And, and he doesn't have to worry that she's going to lose that feeling. Cause she does. She's not going to. I think he emerged from TV love into a real love experience. And he didn't want anymore to share this on TV. I think yeah, when he it was, came out of the yeah. fantasy suite with Teresa, he's like, I don't want the TV cameras on us anymore. I actually feel something he did, that's so it seemed real different. for you now. He seemed different. Yeah. The way he, I want those cameras to turn off. I don't even care about any of this anymore. I just want to walk away from it. If I weren't going to get sued, I would walk away with Teresa right now. Yeah. It, I felt that. It felt, it did feel like something had changed, but in a really great way. We got to the end of the, both of those fantasy suite nights and had I had empathy for Gary and both women. I actually was also really glad for them. I think that would be really, yeah, it, it would be a great experience, but also difficult and difficult for almost anyone. But like, especially, yeah, people who spent their in, entire lives in a marriage with one person, and then not only trying to date multiple people, but like maybe intimacy back to back. Like that's just... That, that that's a lot emotionally to deal with. And I, I get it now, you know, ever since the beginning of the season, we've seen this clip of Gary where he's like, this is the most pain I've felt since my wife died. And I, I had been like, what, what? That seems like a pretty wild thing to say, but now I kind of get it. It's like, if you've slept with two women back, which I don't know if we did, he did, but if you have slept with two women back to back and like, you're going to break one of their hearts. Is it like, and he is the person that he is, you know, yeah. I can see how like. He you know, never saw this coming, this, that it would have this much emotion yeah. in it. And honestly, yeah. the last time he fell in love, he was in his teens. He was a teenager. Yeah. So it was just falling in love now. It is a different experience. It's so much more. Well, what what I've learned from my own experience too, it's, it takes out all of the, well, we're going to need to be financially compatible and you've got to. Uh, think about building a life together and what will we be like as parents? You have all these practical things around. And what do my parents think? And my grandparents think, and at this point mm. it's really down to what do you feel? What do you want? And then all of the other stuff is already there. So you don't have anything that you need to ask of this person. You don't really have a lot of expectations of them. 
So the experience is so much about just the fit and the feeling, the love. Yeah. And gosh, I know he couldn't have imagined what it was going to feel like to actually fall in love with multiple women and then have to break up with yeah. the others. Ouch. Yeah, honestly, I see I see the stakes of this so high cuz like this is the person. I do see some practical things cuz like this is the person who might make medical decisions for you when you can't, who will um be making those decisions with your children you know just Um, when you say that right there i'm like he's gotta say no to leslie but my my memory was in the very first episode at the end and i told this to you he said we saw Teresa crying we saw Teresa crying and i was like well it's not gonna be Teresa." that was right at the end it makes me want to go back well they but they love to trick you so it's like that could have been from something else yeah you know, because she did cry. She did cry that one time in, in the, the room, bedroom. you know, when, yeah. Yeah. So, maybe, so it could have been from that night. It's like, who knows? Time, and it would be easy for me to mix those up, but it happened already. Because they would love that if from the beginning you went, well, it's not going to be Teresa. And then it was, it's shocked you. They love to do okay. that, clearly. So, it, um, <laughs> but we both have come, I, yeah. come out as saying we're really hoping it's Teresa. We think it's the right fit for him, yes. for his yeah. his life, the families, the cultures what their future would be like. And then as soon as you said somebody who would make decisions for you uh, based on your life and your health, yeah. I would, I personally would want it to be Teresa for me. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to trust Leslie yeah. to make decisions. By the way, the person I ask you, is this, I don't, will decide to take you off the machines or not. You can't trust. Leslie I don't know if that. this is unfair what? to step into the world of TikTok, but are you seeing videos about Leslie on TikTok? Leslie from the 1920s? No. Also, I, since I've been so sick, I haven't really been on social media at all. Well, they keep showing so, up for me. What's... Leslie was a an aerobics instructor who made – she was on some kind of TV show in the 1980s. As a, and she has a really high voice. It's really interesting to hear because she talks like this. Hi, I'm Leslie. <laughs> 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 and she uh, – yeah, it's, it, it just keeps showing up. And she's also so much like, I'm, a, I'm Leslie and I'm an aerobics instructor and I want to be on TV. You know, you can see, oh, she's always <laughs> wanted to be on TV. Yeah. And I assume she was super hot. Kind of. Ooh. It, she, Ooh. she wasn't, st- I guess she was. Drama. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but not more than other people I saw that were into aerobics in yeah. the eighties. <laughs> she doesn't stand out yeah. to me that much, but I, Leslie hasn't stood out to me as the most beautiful one of all of them, I guess. I don't know. Should we even talk about it? Who, who was the most beautiful? Yeah. I mean, there's everybody is somebody's type, yeah. you know, which is like Leslie has clearly stuck out, stuck out, to Gary as being incredibly beautiful. She from is the very, very fit and physical and youthful. Absolutely. She has stayed active yeah. her whole life and her body really, it does show you, if you just keep exercising, your body does not have to get old. There's another woman on TikTok who is a gymnast in her nineties. Whenever she shows up in my TikTok, what? I was like, oh yeah, look at her. She is just, a. she looks like a normal person who can do all cartwheels and the headstands and she yeah. just kept her body going. And you don't have to have your body stop moving if you just keep your body moving. I don't know. I mean, as my mom already knows, um, I have either pulled a muscle or cracked a rib from coughing over the past few weeks. So I can barely do anything. So that even that, you, just, get just you saying 90-year-old gymnast, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't see this in my future. I, I can't. At this point, I'm like, I might just – lay down and become one with the earth at any moment, you know? Um, but I, I've read, see, I can't even, I, read, I have to, I have to not make myself laugh too much because that it hurts. <laughs> I have, I'm like, Erica, no, you're not funny. Stop. You're that. going to get it back. Trust me. It's just a, who knows? Who knows? It's a cold muscle. I'll be, look, you'll be back forever. I pulled it forever. No, no I'm just kidding. I know. I'll heal. <laughs> I thought it was, but it does feel a little pathetic. I thought it was Sandra. <laughs> Sandra. I thought was the prettiest of all the women. I loved her vitality. Sandra is really pretty. She is so youthful looking. 
She's just beautiful in every shot, even when she's ripping a big one or whatever. She's amazing. Also, she's just so funny. She's so I love funny. I, I, I would love for her to be the gold. I loved watcher. it when she dove for the pickleball and nailed it in her first time ever playing the game. And I was like, gosh, she is my yeah. hero. And you and I talked about this before in the earlier episode. I thought she made a very brave and personal decision to stay on the show instead of going to her daughter's wedding. I thought, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. so, too. And Josh and I ended up doing a whole episode about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, actually, if you're listening to this as a regular episode, we um, Josh and I did a premium episode where we completely dissected that um, that decision that she made and also the way that it was uh, misrepresented on social media. Because when Josh first just saw content about it on um, TikTok, they were like, wow, what a shitty thing to do, basically. Like, mm-hmm. I can't believe somebody would do that. And uh, I was like, Josh, you actually don't know what you're talking about in this instance because um, you don't know the context. And I know just knowing you the way I do, I know as soon as I tell you the context, your opinion is going to change. And it did. And so just mm-hmm. we, yeah, we did a, a whole like hour <laughs> just diving into that because it was so fascinating to see how like most people judge it very harshly because – they were just imagining it in their own lives. It yes. was their mom. It was their wedding, you yeah. know? But then when you could see the context and also when you hear from what her daughter actually thought and you remember like, oh, yeah, her daughter is like 50. Like, this is not, you know. That's also this clear- something that's fun about this show. I, I wish they'd go to more of the families because you get to get a peek into different families. They are all really different. Yeah. You cannot say – my family is like all the other families. And that's one reason why I don't like politicians making decisions for all of our families. Like all of our families are like their families. Yeah. Correct that one in there too. Well, okay. I think Good. we're getting Let's make this close to the end of our second to last episode of our podcast, knowing that we're going to watch that final episode and then we're going to talk about it. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Second to last. Um, yeah. So next well, okay, this week is Thanksgiving, so it's mm-hmm. going to be next week. And then I think, as far as I know, but obviously I've been wrong before, um, it ends with the last episode. They're going to meet Gary's family, and then he's going to choose someone. They did I, show I, that in the previews the that he talks with yeah. his daughters, and his daughters say their impression of meeting each of these women. Oof. And I definitely think they're going to like Teresa more. I can't imagine – I mean – I, I just can't imagine Leslie making a good impression with the daughters. Well, they really made can't. some – they had a little clip of one of his daughters saying, she says she feels this way, but I didn't pick that up. And I wonder, gosh, yeah. I hope that is about Leslie and that his daughter can see through it right away. Yeah. If not – I'll be very surprised <laughs> if it's – yeah. Because also, obviously, we do have to remember we actually don't know these people. And so, like, we could – have a totally wrong read on them because we're basing it on the edits, you know, it's like, it's always important to remember that. So I just um, picked my calendar also, December 1st that afternoon. You and I, we need to talk to each other and let's, let's talk again. Okay. Film our opinion. So yeah, put it out there. Erica. Um, yeah. So thank you to everybody who, you know, uh, listened to this despite, um, the long wait. having, cause I, I didn't, I didn't tell the world I was sick. You had no idea. You thought maybe I abandoned you and maybe that's why I stopped making podcast episodes, but I would never abandon you. I just sometimes get sick and lose my voice. And if I know anything um, about you, Erica, you never abandon, you never do. Thank you. That's true. I'm, I'm here, whether you guys like it or not. <laughs> um, so we'll, uh, we'll see y'all in a couple of weeks and, um, thank you once again, mom, for, being my golden co-host. Thank you for inviting me, Erica. I had a great time talking with you. I get to see you in person very soon. I'm excited. Yeah, actually, I'll see you in a couple days. Yeah, I love you. Love you too. (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye. Aliens Watching Reality TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. It's produced and edited by Erica Heidewald. That's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. For $5 a month, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get an extra full-length episode of the podcast every week. Right now, we're covering Love is Blind Season 1. We'd love to hear from you. Our social media links are in the episode notes, or you can write to us at alienswatchingrealitytv at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, until death do us part. Amen. Welcome to the world. Let me tell you about
tell you what I've learned about